The more you associate happiness with curiosity, the happier you'll be when your curiosity is satisfied. Welcome to the happy channel. It's TRS Clips. I'd probably like to believe that first there was a woman. Yes. Because all of us have come out of a woman. Yeah. Why would the universe not work in that manner? Then patriarchy took over. And men were everything. Patriarchy took over all cultures, not just Indian culture. Yeah. Uh, that's what Dr. Pravahakar yes. also said about Africa. Yes. Yeah. He said that when they actually started seeing signs and symbols inside the pyramids, inside ancient African structures, in, inside ancient South American yes, pyramids. Yes, and all that, yes. What they figured is there was lots of phases of human history where society was mostly matriarchal. Yes. In some cases to a toxic degree. Uh, yes, yes. But, it can be. Yeah. Power. <laughs> yeah. But uh, ancient civilizations always tried transferring knowledge forward to future generations. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that was constantly transferred was male and female equality. Yeah. The equality of all human beings. Yeah. And in saying all that, I still believe, and maybe it's because I'm sort of into Devi worship right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I feel we all came out of a woman. Yeah. So yeah. somewhere, maybe I'm 51% on the side yes. of matriarchy. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And what I do love very much is uh, when I go through the Purans and I see how Parvati is depicted, usually in most of the Purans, she's very submissive to Shiva. Then I found these absolute nuggets. I found these beautiful episodes. There's one episode in which she makes him take off his loincloth while they're playing Chaucer. And uh, she, he always wins. And there's always this competition between the two of them that Shiva is more powerful than Shakti. But Shakti was also very powerful when we go back to the matriarchal past. And uh, so she says, uh, she, she wins at one time. And when she wins, she just takes, tells him, take off that, that crescent moon on your head. And he takes it off and gives it to her. She makes a hole in it and she wears it on as an ear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the Purans, it's written like that. Then she looks at him and she makes him take off. He's got Rudraksh and all. She doesn't like the snakes at all, but she said, take off the snakes. He loves his snakes. He's very thonic. He's very earthy, no? the ground. So she takes the snakes. And also I read that poison, you know, he's so poisonous himself. Only he can handle poison. Someone who himself is fierce and strong can handle the snake's poison. But anyway, then she takes the snakes away. And then finally she said, I've won in Chaucer. Now you take off your loincloth. And then finally Shiva speaks. Up till now he's not spoken. He said, you want me to go around naked? What kind of wife are you? And then she says, you did that. Don't you remember how you seduced all the sages' wife in so-and-so episode in the Daruvana episode? You know, so she, it's such a nice egalitarian relationship that I see between Shiva and Parvati, which you don't ever see this kind of dialogue between any other couple. Explain the word egalitarian. Egalitarian, very equal. Like they play Chaucer, they play board games, they go swimming together. They, they Very often they're discussing the Purans. So she, you'll see images of her with her hand on her chin like this, and he's talking. Very often he's asking her questions. She's talking. So they, they, they both give each other space. And he's decorating her with flowers. She's decorating him with flowers. And one of my favorite sculptures is, you know, whenever Shiva and Parvati are shown together in a loving way, in, methun, in a methun way as a couple, you know, he, she's either sit, seated in his lap and his hand is cupping her breast and blah, blah, blah. In some images you'll see, she has got her hand around his shoulder and she's having, because he's taller than her, she's having it. The sculptor has done such a wonderful job showing her, straining her hand. But she's also, not just the man puts his hand around my shoulder. How many times have you seen in India a woman putting her hand around a man's shoulder, especially in olden, maybe now? And in those ancient sculptures, we were seeing Parvati do it to Shiva. And I was en entranced when I saw those images and I put them in my first book and I wrote about it. I said, look at Parvati, because they had that kind of relationship. She used to get very angry. They used to have such fights, I can't tell you. Just like any married couple, showing how couples can fight. He teases her. He calls her Kali. She says, how can you call me Kali? You're the one who's called Mahakal. So a punning taking place also over there. You're the one who's called Mahakal. Where am I, Kali? And in most of the other ones, you'll, uh, Purans, you'll see, she goes running and she does penance and she becomes gory. In one, she insults him. She says, you're a rogue. You're a skull carrier. I, I, you're giving me a headache. I don't want to have anything to do with you. And she goes away. So there are these things which male historians don't want to talk about because that shows the male God in bad light. But when I saw them, I emphasized them that there was a consciousness in the past when the Purans were being written where women were also strong and had a voice in a marriage also. He mm -hmm. said, I don't want to have children. I'll, I was never born. I, was, I will never die. 
Why do human beings want, why do men want children so that they can do the Agni at the death? I will never die. I will never have children. And he used to run away from her. She made her own Ganesha. That's how autonomous she was. That's how much of a mind she was. Look at the myths like that. And they empower you and they make you feel so good. New clips released at the same time that a podcast releases. This is TRS Clips. Make sure you subscribe.